Police say it happened just after three o'clock um, with gunfire erupting both on and off school property. Luckily, no students or staff were injured. However, officers are investigating reports of a man being shot at. Hi, what is up? In this video, we are going to talk about the history of the Southside Connection Bloods. CYB or what many of you may know it now as Southside Jane and Finch. In order for us to get a better understanding of this, we're going to dive deep to where this originated from. This 13-acre area is located at the northwest section of Toronto, Ontario. This area is called Fergro Grassways, and it is bound by Jane Street to the east of it, Fergro Crescent to the south of it, Fergro Public School to the west. The Fergro Grassways community, also referred to as Connections by the locals, is a 13-acre of community housing, mixed with three blocks of two-story and four-story townhomes, that was built in 1971. Also, a 12-story tower with 15 two-story townhouses built in 1975. This is a community that has been a home to many low-income families, 40% of it being of black African descent, and the rest of them West Indians descent, but still this is a predominantly a minority community that migrated from all different parts of the world. This is all because they're seeking for a better life and better opportunities in Canada, and I don't blame them. The reason why the locals call it connections, is because of its physical structure of the buildings. We look at it from afar, the series of the buildings right next to each other is all connected all around, hence its given name. Some locals might dispute and say, it got its name connections, because for it being a spot for buyers looking to connect with the dealers. Furthermore, as many of you may know, that Toronto has been undergoing with a lot of revitalization plans, combating to put a stop with gun violence, drugs, trafficking from all parts of Toronto, mainly in pockets of low-income neighborhoods, such as Regent Park and Lawrence Heights communities. Communities need to connect with the communities around them in order to succeed. A similar transformation is already taking place in Regent Park. Lawrence Heights is on a much bigger scale. The Fergrove Grassways have also been undergoing with a lot changes as well regarding to that. So in April 2017, the City of Toronto has approved the closure of two blocks of townhouses at Fergrove Crescent, totaling 134 units, due to unsafe conditions. Then on February 26, 2018 and March 19, 2018, Toronto Community Housing Corporations held community update meetings to inform tenants about the master plan, and that would be proceeding with the revitalization of the Fergrove Grassways community. When revitalization happens usually you will see brand new homes being built for the existing units that are standing today, along with new streets, open spaces and amenities. All of this because the TCHC deemed this move to be cost-effective solution to the dilapidated and deteriorating building in this area, rather than putting money into fixing it up to par. Now that we got a quick backstory of the area, we can now talk about how the area got its name. This area is notoriously known for being a local blood set aka Southside Connection Bloods, but this wasn't the only area that was blood as well long ago. The Jane Finch community in general has been one of the largest concentrations of criminal gangs of any area in Canada. Gang activity among youths within the area has reached an all-time high. At one point during the early 1990s, the local gangs in Jane and Finch were united under blood sets, with gangs such as the Trife Kids, No Love Vice Lords, Looney Tunes and the Jane Finch Killers, being some of the earliest blood sets to develop in the neighborhood. This was to the growing responses that was roaming rival of the Crip gangs from Rexdale, who would always constantly clash with them at local clubs, bars and public events. But ultimately the 1990s would expose an even bigger threat than those from outside of the Jane and Finch community. The growing animosity between the youths from up top Jane and Finch area and the down bottom, began to manifest itself and grow even bigger. But after a few violent conflicts among Stoji members from different factions, along with new alliances being forged with Roman gang members from Rexdale, that unity was stopped by the mid to late 1990s. By the mid to late 1990s, the beef became an all-out war between residences from Driftwood Court and the Fergrove Grassways with adjective neighborhoods, choosing their allegiances accordingly. The Driftwood Crips were the first gang in Jane and Finch to claim the up-top Crip set. Members have traditionally been rivals of the South Side Connection Bloods from this ongoing feud. Now youths who live north of the Bloods which is Shoreham Court, Driftwood Court, do not venture into complexes south of them, like Grand Ravine and Fergrove Grassways, which are regarded as territory of the Bloods, referred to as Down Bottom. This self-imposed segregation not only affects loyal gang members, but innocents and victims not connected to gang violence, had to adapt as well, but it also acts as an effective buffer zone between the two groups, which helped stem some of the violence sadly. Now fast forwarding and going into the recent events, now we see artists emerging and as well as establishing themselves already from the Fergrove Grassways area, such as NHS JJ. No, why you do that? 
Got a bad bitch in FD, yeah Black or 50, yeah I bring the smoke like it's misty I take him out of his misery NHS Lil B King Tryna call me a reef and shit She don't fuck on day and shit Got some shooters on your block Masked up, they ready to take your shit On the block that we chasing it They gonna trap was made for this That nigga steady talk Fuck the ops You don't do no basic bitch LB fans I ran. I try bricks like karate, yeah. Then I push it to the clientele. What the hell you couldn't tell? I like that L, you would think I'm a yardie, yeah. Like Gotti in a big body. My shorty riding like Bonnie, yeah. Hey, uh. My shorty riding like Bonnie. Can mainly LB Spiffy, being the most consistent one making hits as early as January of 2017 with the viral hit of my phone. This song was definitely loved by a lot in the city, which gave their attention to those underground artists and music with catchy hooks and verses to enjoy. It even got better when LB Spiffy grabbed the attention of the most popular rapper in the world, and fellow Canadian rapper, Drake, to even enjoy the track. Not only to enjoy, but to play it to his tour opening is something truly extraordinary, and what most likely motivates LB Spiffy to make more bangers like Crawling in February of 2017, and my personal favorite track of him is No. LB Spiffy has a work ethic like no other artist when being consistent especially at a young age, no one can take that away from him. His recent tune, Kawasaki posted on the official World Star Hifip, gained 75k views already in just 2 weeks. This should be an already tall tale signs good things will come, and we will hear more of LB Spiffy for many more years to come. Now onto another artist in the Firgrove Grassway area that just recently made some buzz and that is Doobie. Doovy has been on the recent to come up even though he was in the rap game for a couple of years prior, but dropping the 13-track EP called Jane Babies on December 27, 2019. It showed how versatile Doovy was at his rapping and hook game. Also, releasing the music videos called Nightmares, that you can hear the catchy hooks alongside spitting memorable bars. video in two sides of me. This itself easily propelled Doobie's career even further, and getting more recognition, after racking up 1 million views altogether just dropping a few months apart, still scorching hot from his EP. His name has been coming up in discussions and conversations a lot more often than before. His style of music sort of reminds me of the rapper Lil Baby, with his little own twist on his verses and hooks, that makes him stand out from the rest of the artists in the city. This is truly amazing for the music scene in Toronto not only that, but especially in Southside Connections where he is from. 
This area usually doesn't see a lot of opportunities as it's hard to come, since it's usually plagued by gun violence, murders and not enough resources, just pretty much plain out not having much at all. Recently, on September 26, 2020, it was reported in the news and on TPS's Twitter that a shooting had happened at 6.24 p.m. at a townhouse on 1884 Shepherd Avenue West AK known as Baghdad. Three males was found shot in the area, as well as four guns recovered, but two males was arrested, 27 shell casings located on the scene of the crime. Later on, from speculations and some more posts coming up on Instagram, it was later then confirmed one of the males shot was identified as Duvi. Duvi was found to be shot in the leg and rushed on an emergency run to the hospital. Rumors were circling around as to who had done or why had this happened. Some say it was because NHS lol BK, Kenzo was dissing fellow rivals on Instagram live, as well as pissing on rivals memorial site. Will others say it's either the GGGs AK the Go Jetum gang, due to the social media antics or taunts of being shot in the leg, or the up top Jane and Finch crooks being their rivals of course. Listen, I was 18 when I bought a gun, 22 when I shot your son, and these bitches think I'm James Bond, we'll flip a beat just case you know he's up, you should call me Barry Ware, pay for all these bonds, very fine. I got 21 no. questions. I do. When you got shot, did you learn your fucking lesson? Did you? Uh, you was in rehab bench pressing. Jackson, I thought you said, bitch. What happened? <laughs> I got 21 questions. Thank you, man. Let's see us. I got 21. He's a bitch. I got 21 questions. Uh, I got 21. <laughs> I got 21 questions. You gotta let go. I got 21. But in the turn of events, Doobie managed to put out his song Nightmares, despite being shot in the leg and hospitalized. It was quite a calculated move on Doobie, to capitalize on the buzz his name was getting, after social media found out it was him, so he took it and ran with it. Now after getting that much attention and being posted on social media all around, now everyone in the city took notice of him even his rivals, and with that he continues to drop songs consistently on Spotify and Apple Music, while racking up views daily and song plays monthly. Hopefully Doobie stays out of trouble and makes it out of the city, especially knowing there is hate from the other side. I hope you enjoyed the video I made, and make sure you subscribe to see you in another video.